right, friends, we are on the home stretch. In this video, we are going to be looking at the final topic of our Getting Started series, this being retention. So generally, as you are collecting data over time, your old historic raw data becomes less and less useful. And many times you're even aggregating that raw data. So that historic raw data really just doesn't have much use at all. And it's just eating up your disk space. So this is where retention really shines. With retention, you can set up an automatic schedule that drops historic old raw data um, so that you can save space in your database. I mean, who doesn't love saving space? So <laughs> in this video, we're going to show you how to set up an automatic retention policy. Uh, and we'll also show you how to do a kind of one off um, manual retention call as well. So we have lots to cover as always. Let's hop right on over to the desktop and check things out. So retention policies allow you to drop data based on time. So if we look at this image, right, it's very similar to the images um, in the last two videos where we're kind of building on it, almost you could think of. Um, so if we look at this image, the lower timeline represents the raw data, while the top one represents our aggregated data within a continuous aggregate. So if we place a retention policy on our raw data, notice how the continuous aggregate data stays intact. That's important. And the data in our continuous aggregate stays intact because our refresh policy does not look for any changes in the data that we um, call, or in the same interval that we call the retention policy. Okay, so they're, they are offset. The retention policies and the refresh policies are offset, and that's really important. Otherwise, you could lose some of your aggregated data in your continuous aggregate because the refresh policy looks for any changes, sees that your raw data was dropped, and will update the aggregated data accordingly. So you wanna make sure that you keep those offset. Super important. And um, really the, the bonus here of actually putting on a retention policy in your raw data um, is that you save disk space, right? Especially if you are, you know, really only ever looking at the aggregated data, that old historic raw data may never come in handy again. So you can kind of regain some of that disk space, save some money um, and add on your retention policy. So just one way that you can save storage, um, or if your data just really doesn't become useful after a period of time, retention policies can be great. You can even put them on your continuous aggregate as well. So um, lots of options for you. <laughs> so um, note that there are two different types of retention, right? We have the, as I mentioned before, the automatic retention policy and then um, dropping data manually. Uh, so let's start off with the automatic retention policy. So our automatic retention policy requires two arguments, the name of the table, um, and then you specify the time period uh, or the time interval saying that you want to drop data, data later than that time interval. So in this case, if we want to drop data that's later, that's older than three weeks, how we would do that is we call select add retention policy. And this, you know, very similar to that continuous aggregate policy or the compression policy. Um, when we call this add retention policy, we, it, it removes the data that we specify and it actually creates this recurring policy that's going to be running daily. So in this case, um, we want to, I set up the retention policy on my stocks real time table. Um, so it's a hyper table that my continuous aggregate kind of pulls on. Um, and I want to specify that I only want to um, drop data that's later or older than three weeks. Cool. So right, once we run the command, we have the data dropped and that recurring policy. Awesome. So then we can actually even check to see um, what the policy looks like. And this will actually include any of the jobs that you have. Um, so 
select all from our time scale DB information jobs. Um, just useful to know, it, you know, since it's the last video, I thought, you know, now you can see all of the jobs, <laughs> your continuous aggregate, your compression, and now your retention jobs. Very cool. Um, so then the last thing that we're going to look at is now the manual retention. So the arguments within manual retention are very similar to the automatic retention policy. However, you get the bonus of being able to specify a lower bound. So you can drop data within kind of a, a specific interval rather than just older than some interval. So to show you that behavior, um, I'm going to do select drop chunks. So we're dropping chunks. Um, it's the that's the 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 function that you know does what it says. It drops chunks <laughs> on the stocks real time table. So that's our the table that we want to drop data from. And then we we specify the um, upper bound, which is older than two weeks and the lower bound newer than three weeks. So this very specifically says I only want to drop data that is newer than three weeks, but older than two weeks. So you can kind of put both bounds on, or you could just specify one if you want. So um, if we were to run this command, I'm not actually going to run it, <laughs> but um, all chunks older than two weeks, but newer than three would be dropped from our stocks real time table. And remember, this is a one off. Um, it will not create a recurring policy. So just good to know. And now you know. <laughs> awesome. And there you have it, friends. Now you have a base understanding of retention policies and just retention in general with Timescale DB. This brings us to the end, friends. I am kind of sad about this. <laughs> um, it has been so fun to do this series and, and write the documentation and provide this knowledge and information to you all. I hope that you had as much fun watching the videos as I had kind of creating them. Um, we, all of us at Timescale, wanna thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to go through this series or maybe just this video, who knows? <laughs> um, it really is awesome. We, we love our community. So if you have any feedback, thoughts, questions, anything, we do really appreciate any comments below. Um, and also on our Slack or forum, great places to also leave any comments, questions, or, you know, whatever discussions. <laughs> um, also, we have lots of awesome content coming out of the Timescale DB channel here on YouTube. So you'll want to smash that subscribe button still because um, you don't want to miss any of the sweet content that we're coming out with. And we're going to have more series in the future. So you'll not want to miss it. Cool beans. Um, thank you so much again for taking time. Um, hopefully we will see you in the near future. And for the last time, friends, at least for this series, happy coding.